Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to uh, thank the Honourable Member for Abitabi, Bay James, Nunavik EU, uh, for introducing this bill and prompting this important discussion. His passion on this issue was uh, quite evident, and I want to recognize him for that. While I may oppose the passage of Bill C-641, I agree issues related to Aboriginal rights are an integral part of Canada's past and our future. My Southern Alberta riding of McLeod has a rich First Nations history, and I am proud to represent them here today. It is well known our government has been working on reconciliation and the implementation of Aboriginal rights across Canada. As a member of the Aboriginal Affairs and Northern Development Committee, I am particularly pleased to have the opportunity to address this subject. In 2010, it was this government who endorsed the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, underscoring our commitment to reconciliation, to building a positive and productive relationship with First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples, and to improving the well-being of Aboriginal Canadians. As we said when we endorsed the Declaration, Mr. Speaker, the government's vision is a future in which Aboriginal families and communities are healthy, self-sufficient and prosperous. Just as much as that vision remains true today, it has guided the actions of this government from the beginning. The Prime Minister's 2008 historic apology to former students of Indian residential schools, to their families and communities, remains the most public manifestation of this government's, indeed any Canadian government's, commitment to reconciliation. The Prime Minister's heartfelt words will echo for generations, for they mark not a conclusion, but a beginning of a new era of Aboriginal relations in this country. The creation of the Truth and Recon Reconciliation Commission as part of the Indian Residential School Settlement Agreement was another watershed moment. The Commission's activities and outreach have been fundamental in the process of reconciliation. As honourable members here are aware, our government has extended the Commission's mandate by an additional 12 months to June of this year. This will ensure it can report fully on the historic injustice and start Canadians on the path of reconciliation. The work of the Commission will stand as a lasting reminder there is no place in Canada for the attitudes that inspired the Indian residential school system to ever prevail again. Even more than this, Mr. Speaker, our government has redoubled its efforts to work in partnership with Aboriginal people to foster opportunities for a better future for Aboriginal peoples throughout Canada. It must be said, Mr. Speaker, this work is achieving real results. Our government is delivering on economic development, on housing and on family and child services. We're producing results with respect to education, access to safe drink drinking water and especially governance. And we're making concrete developments related to sharing benefits of natural resource development in traditional Aboriginal territories, on the extension of human rights protection and on matrimonial real property protection to First Nations on reserve. We are accelerating efforts to resolve the past grievances of First Nations relating to Canada's obligations under historic treaties with tools that expedited specific claims process. This new process brought in under our government allowed the Minister to clear away a backlog of specific claims left behind by the Liberal government. Pro progress in areas such as the settlement of specific claims is essential to advancing reconciliation while establishing a more predictable climate for economic investment and increased prosperity for Aboriginal communities, things that work to the benefit of all Canadians. These treaty agreements provide Aboriginal communities with the lands, resources and the tools they need to determine their own destiny and take advantage of opportunities for economic development in ways that they could not have been able to do before. Our government has committed to reach specific claim settlements fairly and expeditiously through negotiation with First Nations and the results cannot be denied. Since 2007, 125 specific claims have been negotiated representing some $2.2 billion in settlements for First Nations communities across the country. We are equally committed to negotiating fair settlements to self-government and comprehensive land claims, and we are responding to Aboriginal groups and others who have long called for reforms to this federal approach. In July of last year, the Minister announced a number of key measures to address key impediments to concluding modern treaties. This included making important changes to Canada's own source revenue policy and resuming negotiations related to the fisheries in British Columbia. 
In addition, the Minister also announced important new measures to promote reconciliation in advance of and outside of treaty. Canada will now consider proposals to negotiate incremental treaty and non-treaty agreements. These are two important new tools to help strengthen partnerships with Aboriginal groups and help uh, address their Section 35 rights. Incremental agreements could address one or more elements of an eventual treaty or could exist as a standalone agreement in the event a treaty is not concluded. Moreover, our government has clarified Canada's approach to the resolution of shared territory disputes in the context of resource development, and we continue to take this seriously as our duty to consult with Aboriginal groups, particularly those in priority areas of high resource development. We are engaging Aboriginal groups and other stakeholders in the renewal of federal consultation guidelines, including new industry guidance and a public statement to clarify Canada's approach to Aboriginal consultation. Our government is also working towards developing a new framework of addressing Section 35 Aboriginal rights through dialogue with Aboriginal groups and other stakeholders. As a first step in the development of this new framework, the Minister appointed Douglas Aford as Ministerial uh, Special Representative to lead engagement with Aboriginal groups and key stakeholders on the renewal of the Comprehensive Land Claims Policy. Over the past six months, Mr. Aford met with representatives of more than 100 Aboriginal groups federal, provincial, and territorial governments, and industry. Mr. Aford's report is now in hand. Over the coming months, we will engage with Aboriginal groups as well as other stakeholders to seek their feedback on Mr. Aford's recommendations. At the end of this process, we hope to have an improved comprehensive claim policy that will ensure collaboration between parties and enhance the BC treaty process. This is the Canadian way, Mr. Speaker to address these matters not unilaterally, but through a process of respectful partnership, consultation and negotiation. A process that supports reconciliation and one that leads to shared solutions like the work uh, that work for Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Canadians alike. We believe that much of the work that our government has done with First Nations is actually compatible in spirit of UNDRIP. However, our government has also been very clear we continue to have serious concerns regarding certain clauses in the Declaration that go well beyond Canadian law. Canada has a constitutionally entrenched framework in place that ensures the recognition with, and when appropriate, accommodation of a potential or established Aboriginal and treaty rights with respect to Crown activity. This is important for good governments, sound policy development, and decision making. This framework balances the interests of Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Canadians and has served, for a model, has served as a model for nations around the world. Mr. Speaker, however well intended this bill may be, it is the view of this government that supporting Bill C-641 would run the risk of hindering our ability to balance these interests and realize solutions that work for all Canadians. For these reasons, I urge the House to join me in voting against it. Thank you.